My flight was delayed over an hour due to what the airline described as a minor technical problem. I have an aversion to flying anyway, so this didn't do much to boost my confidence. In any case, it was a pleasant surprise for me that we, after an unusually bumpy flight, landed safely. With a sigh of relief, I walked out of the terminal building into the hot Florida afternoon and eventually got into the large air-conditioned limousine that was waiting for me. Although the thought that I would have to make the return trip in just a day or two was in the back of my mind, at the moment I had more important things on my mind. I was very nervous again as I got out of the car outside the hotel. I was in an unfamiliar city, in a country that I had only seen in movies and on TV. Unfortunately, mostly in crime series, not the programs that give you confidence in your safety when visiting these places, especially if, like me, you don't travel much. Anyway, when I got out of the car, I was somewhat relieved to find that Paul and Della immediately recognized me and started talking to me. Hey, Mike, we weren't sure you'd make it on time. We will take your luggage and send you to your room. Now you better go. She's waiting in the lobby, Della said. Paul gave me a quick nod of greeting and walked to the back of the car to pick up my suitcase from the driver. I have to admit, I didn't expect this place to be so majestic. The hotel lobby was gigantic and there seemed to be several hundred people wandering around. In reality, there were probably no more than 30 or 40. How the hell do they expect me to find a woman I've never seen in my life? God only knows. I was asking myself when suddenly an extremely attractive woman appeared in front of me, dressed in a small red, obviously designer, cocktail dress and holding a matching clutch in her left hand. Mike? She asked with a charming smile. Um, yes, Holly? I stammered in response, somewhat stunned by her unexpected beauty. Under the circumstances, Holly was not at all what I expected. Holly smiled again, but surprised me even more by hugging me and kissing me on the cheek. After getting over the initial shock, I mustered all my courage and responded in kind. Sorry, it must be an English thing. We don't usually hug women we've never met before. Although by that time, Holly and I had been corresponding by email for several months and talked to each other on the phone more than once in preparation for this little meeting. I didn't really know what to expect. Did you fly well? She asked. No, Holly, I don't need any more flights. I answered, then explained. Several years ago, I was involved in a very difficult landing. In fact, it was not far from the accident. The plane was a real mess, but I think the local scrap metal dealers were happy. If anything, it kind of undermined my confidence in air transport. If I had known that such a beautiful lady would meet me here and be lucky enough to spend the whole evening with her, then perhaps the flight would not have been so bad. Thank you. I am very flattered that such a handsome gentleman gives me such a compliment. It's not flattery, Holly. In fact, I find you so beautiful that I have to wonder how we ended up in this situation in the first place. I don't know if it was embarrassment or nervousness that made me sway like that. Looking back, I had never normally talked to or flirted with a woman the way I did with Holly over the next two hours. Mind you, looking back at what I actually said, I have to admit that most of the time I was talking absolute nonsense. My mother always said that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Perhaps some people's eyes don't see what others see, Holly replied. Sorry, but I found the last few months very depressing, except for our correspondence. Holly smiled. I thought this whole story would really upset you. Oh, don't think so, Holly. It was only at the very beginning. But then I got to enjoy our little emails and chats, and it became so necessary that I actually looked forward to it. To be honest, for several weeks now, I have been looking forward to coming here and meeting in person. Holly, I looked her up and down, if I knew how beautiful you are, well, it's just a damn surprise. I still can't understand why you chose me. And who better than 34-year-old Mike Crosby, married to Avril, Holly grimaced, for 10 years now. They have no children. Rumor has it that it was Avril's choice. Mike is a maintenance manager at a hospital near where they live. By the way, he hates this job. God, how meticulous you are, I exclaimed. 
No, not me, Mike, but the people I hire. I have several photographs of you. A questioning expression flashed across Holly's face for a second. And one more thing. You look very smart in them. Maybe it was because of these photos that I chose you as my secret lover tonight. She smiled at me and winked slightly. I think you're flattering me, Holly, I answered, smiling. Luckily, at this point, we were interrupted by Paul and Della, the couple who had met me outside the hotel, coming over to join us. The boy took the luggage to the room. Mike, now are you both ready for the big show? Asked Paul. As always. What about you, Holly? I asked, throwing the ball onto her court. Yes, I think I'm ready, she answered. I seemed a little standoffish considering we were going through this whole charade at her insistence. Look, Holly, you know you don't have to do this. Once we get there, you'll know there's no turning back. I can even go there myself if you want. Don't be stupid, Mike. That would defeat the purpose of the exercise, wouldn't it? Do you really think I came all the way from Montreal to miss all the fun? Come on, be brave. So, shall we go? Holly said, taking my hand. But then she looked at Paul and asked, Intimate enough? I probably should have felt awkward, but for some reason I didn't. Come on, guys, whether you're married or not, you all know what it's like when a beautiful woman gets a little closer than she really should. We all have instincts that can, if you let them, take over in such circumstances. My baser natural instincts definitely took over. Although I was very nervous, I couldn't think of any reason to try to control them. Yes, come on, guys. You two lovers, you have a secret date away from your spouses. Make it look right, Della answered in a voice similar to the voice of a film director. Without my permission, Holly put her left arm around my waist and her right arm around my arm. Then she pressed herself very close to me. Normally, I would have thought it was close to awkward. Yeah, here's the ticket. Let's try it and don't forget all those sticky eyes. Della giggled. It won't be that difficult. I replied, looking at Holly next to me. Hey, watch out, Holly. Looks like our Mike is out hunting here. Della commented. Holly didn't answer, or rather, she couldn't answer. Because when I looked down at her, she took me by surprise again and kissed me on the lips. Sorry, Mike, she said, sensing my embarrassment. I should have asked, but I need to make sure my lipstick is smeared convincingly. Holly, when you want to smudge your lipstick, don't ask. Maybe I should apply for a full-time job as a lipstick smearer, I said, and kissed her. Well, it's not every day you get the chance to kiss such a beautiful woman like Holly. Married or not, I'm only human. Sorry to interrupt you guys, but are we doing this or not? Because if you want, we can go straight to the bedroom scene. Della laughed. Maybe later? Holly whispered to me, giggling, and then, lightly pulling me by the waist, she pulled me towards the hotel lobby. For all her bravado, I could sense that Holly was almost as nervous as I was. So I took the remark as nervous chatter. Entering the living room was a bit of a disappointment, actually. The place was quite crowded, but I will add that I noticed several guys showing much more than mild interest in the stunning woman in a little red cocktail dress pressed against my side. Not that I could blame them, I had a damn hard time not looking at the incredible cleavage Holly was showing off in that dress. I feel like I was strutting around like the cat that ate the canary. It had been a long time since I had been so proud of a woman I was escorting. Paul and Della took the lead, and we followed them to a table against the wall. The waiter came over and we ordered drinks, and I found it unpleasant to sit with my back to most of this room because I could only look at the stage where a small orchestra was playing. I actually wanted to scrutinize everyone in this place, but that might give the game away. Our drinks arrived and the four of us made small talk, mostly about my delayed flight. This is not good. I think we'll have to up the ante, said Paul. Didn't they see us? asked Holly. Too self-absorbed, I don't think they've said a word to the others since we entered. Go ahead, you two, mind your own business. I extended my hand, and Holly took it as we both stood up. I must warn you, Holly, that I am not Gene Kelly. I warned her. I'm sure you can handle it, my love. Holly answered with a grin. Darling, I asked. But that's what you're supposed to be tonight, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's damn annoying that we have to play these stupid games, isn't it? Who's playing? Holly said, winking at me, 
putting both arms around my neck and pulling me towards her. If, I thought to myself, Lord, if only the guys in the office could see me now. It was already the third set since we arrived, and they were playing slower. Oh my God, did I really do this? Holly asked, pressing into me. Sorry, but desirable women usually do this to me, I answered, blushing slightly. I can't say that we actually danced in the literal sense. We just swayed in the same place, slowly spinning. I must say that it was one of the most enjoyable dances in recent years. Suddenly, another couple pushed us slightly. You've been spotted, Paul whispered. Be careful, you might look in the wrong direction. Focus on the dance. I looked back at Holly, who was smiling charmingly back at me. Holly, you're a damn good actress, I thought to myself. You know, I hope the balloon doesn't take off too early. I like it, I told her. I feel it, my love, she said with a cheeky grin, and then pressed herself even closer to me. I wonder, Holly, if you have any sadistic tendencies? I noticed, smiling. I like to tease, Mike. This evening was the best joke I could come up with. I don't know what expression crossed my face, but it made Holly laugh out loud. I only wished that I really was the person she was really teasing, but I knew that the good Lord could never look upon me so favorably. Oh, don't look so dejected, Mike. After all, you don't need to rush back to the UK, do you? We can always take a few days to enjoy the Florida sun. Now that we've been noticed, let's make it look really good. The next thing I know... Holly's head is on my shoulder, and she's chewing on my neck and earlobe. Hey, take it easy, girl, or I'll have an accident, I warned. Holly giggled in response and, more importantly, did not stop her manipulations. She doubled them, for that matter. Much to my relief, the band's performance ended before I lost control, and we returned to our table. Holly walked, holding my hand and dragging me along. As we got closer, Paul motioned for us to sit down, but his eyes were glued to something that was happening on the other side of the room. That's right. He's already on his way. When he comes, you can stand and argue with him, but don't lay a hand on him, Mike. We can handle anything rough. That's what we get paid for, Paul said, leaning forward. She goes? I asked. No, you know, I don't think she realized it was you. If she saw you at all, she had her back to the dance floor. But now she's watching him intently, so she'll probably notice you as soon as you get up and turn around. What the hell is going on here, Holly? What are you doing here, and what the hell are you playing with that idiot? And anyway, who is he? Asked an angry voice from somewhere not far from my left shoulder. I stood up and turned to face the guy. Holly danced with that idiot, just like you no doubt danced with my wife. Well, yes. At that moment, it was the best thing I could come up with. I didn't know what I was going to say when the confrontation began. Holly, who also stood up, had obviously rehearsed her little speech well. And he'll probably have passionate sex later while you make out with his wife in room 642. By the way, we're in room 643, right across the street. But we'll try not to make as much noise as you two made last night. Holly said with a smile on her face and hugged my shoulders. I really could have done without Holly at this point because her husband, who was a lot bigger than I thought, could very well pounce on me. And Holly, hanging on to me, limited my maneuverability. But I really didn't have to worry about him. Avril's appearance on stage, I guess after she noticed me as soon as I stood up, was much more exciting. To be honest, Avril came out of nowhere and hit me in the forehead, obviously while running. Essentially, knocking Holly's husband off his feet, she pushed him out of the way. In a way, it was convenient because it took away some momentum from Avril. Holly's husband lay down on some poor woman's lap before falling to the floor. Note that I didn't see this. I was lying on the floor myself, looking at my very angry wife. I think falling to the floor shook Avril a little, as it did me. Anyway, she ended up laying on top of me, looking at my face, what the hell were you doing with that bitch? She demanded. We were dancing, as you can see, I answered, still without a jazz edge. Looks like you were trying to get him into bed, this bitch, she objected. Come on, Avril, I just arrived. I haven't had the opportunity yet. You've had sex with her husband for at least the last two days. 
I was pleased with myself. I took my first good shot. I... But... Don't be so stupid, Mike. Where did you get this stupid idea? Avril said, rolling off me and sitting up. How did you even get here? You don't fly. Yes, but not when I want to catch my wife with her lover. I answered. I was good at these counter-strikes. This is nonsense, Mike. You know I'm here on a business trip. Avril, your business trip was to Houston. This is damn Florida. Neither you nor your company has anything to do here in Miami. You had a meeting in Houston, and then you flew here. And you've spent the last two nights doing the horizontal tango with that bastard in room 643. Room 642, 643 is our room, Holly's voice corrected me from somewhere. Yes, sorry, room 642. Do you want to see the records, Avril? I asked. I had no idea if Holly had any notes from this trip, but I knew that she had many notes from their previous dates. I decided that Avril didn't really want to see them. Avril just sat on the floor and looked at me. I must admit that this was the first time I saw this woman speechless. No, not like that. I remember the first time I slept with her, before we got married. By the time I was done with her, she lay silent. Well, it wasn't a disappointment to her. She came back for more the next night and ended up marrying me. What a pity. Suddenly, hands helped us to our feet, and the next thing I really knew, besides Holly putting her arm around my waist again, was Paul saying, Morgan Ardent, you're served. And he handed an envelope to Holly's rather disheveled husband. I wonder what I missed that Morgan became so disheveled. Paul then quickly did the same to Avril. Although our British divorce petitions don't really need to be presented as formally as the Yankees do, I could send them by registered mail, I think. Holly and I just decided that it would add a little spice if everything was done officially and at the same time as her husband's papers were presented. Then the two boys, who along with the rest of the company followed the two lovers, were given papers. Holly took care of everything. Avril and Morgan worked for an American company, so we both sued her in American courts for turning a blind eye to what was happening to this couple. Their bosses, who were served with papers, also had their girlfriends. So I think this damn company must have turned a blind eye to everything. Paul eventually filed an alienation of love suit against Morgan Ardent, which Holly's lawyers filed in the American courts on my behalf. It has been many years since someone has successfully completed such a task in the UK. It all ended as suddenly as it began. I really have no idea where or when Avril disappeared. Holly said she was taken away crying by one of her boss's girlfriends, but I didn't see her leave. However, I saw Holly's husband being taken away by two guys. Not before he gave me a look, mind you, that I thought should have turned me to stone. So what now? I asked Holly. We dance. She responded with a smile and pulled me onto the dance floor again. The rest of the evening turned into a small party. I have no idea what time the party ended. I'm afraid I've had too much to drink myself. But I remember the conversation we overheard in the elevator. One of the hotel employees was telling the couple how lucky they were because the hotel was full. But for some reason, the couple from 642 suddenly checked out. The cleaners were still in room 642 when Holly, Paul, Della, and I entered room 643. It's a pity. It takes the rest of the fun out of the evening, said Holly. I couldn't wait to see their faces when we left this room together in the morning. Maybe it's not so bad. It could give their lawyers leverage in court, Paul commented. Paul, I have enough information about what these two have been doing for the last six months to get two divorces. In addition, I have a prenuptial agreement that my father insisted on. He never had a high opinion of Morgan. Yes, but what about Mike? They don't have prenuptial agreements in the UK. I still screwed up, Paul. My lawyer thinks it's 50-50. The only light in the sky is that Avril makes more money than me, I said. Yes, I think that heads will soon roll in this company, and Morgan and Avril will be first on the list. My uncle is a major shareholder and is already involved in this business, Holly told us. It was difficult for me to slow him down, otherwise we would have missed today's fun. Not a lot happened, really, not a lot of fireworks. Quite a waste of money on your part, Holly, for something that could have been done at home, I said, voicing my thoughts. Ah, Mike, 
The look on Morgan's face when you said he slept with your wife was classic. He had no idea who you were. Did I say that? No, not in those words. You are too much of a gentleman. But I did it. And the look on Morgan's face when he realized he didn't catch me and I, or rather we caught them, was something special. And then Avril burst through like a defender at the finish line. The funniest thing I've seen in a long time, Holly said, and laughed out loud. God knows how long we chatted about nothing in particular. But eventually we got to bed. Oh, I better remind you that room 643 was a suite. I had one bedroom, and Holly had the other. When we went to bed, Paul and Della were sitting in the living room. When we got up in the morning, they were sitting there. Apparently Paul was a court officer. I have no idea what that means. But I realized that the American courts would take his words almost as gospel. That is, he would be able to swear that Holly and I did not spend the night in the same bed. So, Mike, what's your plan now? Holly asked at breakfast. I'm not sure. I'll go home to lick my wounds. I answered. Well, the lovers have flown away. Why don't you and I fly to Vegas for a few days before you return home? Good idea, Holly, but I'm going back to the UK. I'm sorry, but adding another flight to Las Vegas is not my idea of a good time. Holly sat there, quite obviously thinking for a few moments. Flying makes you so upset, doesn't it? Okay. Alternative idea. A close friend of mine has a house in the Bahamas. Why don't we go there for a few days? Don't worry. We can go by boat and you won't even have to risk my driving. I had to think about it, but not for very long. Having crossed the Atlantic, it would have been foolish to fly straight to the UK, given that I had almost two weeks of summer holidays left. I had to go home because there was sure to be a real old ding-dong there. The house was already on the market, and I converted everything to cash so she wouldn't drain all the joint accounts. Keep in mind that even though my lawyer oversaw all the changes I made, I still thought I was going to screw up. His job was to keep me from going completely broke. Yes, why not? A good ferry cruise should be fun. But can you just come to your friends without an invitation? Of course, I have a standing invitation. I don't visit them as often as I should. How about you drag me along? Oh, they will surely love you more than Morgan. They never had a high opinion of him, Holly replied with a grin. What to say? The taxi dropped us off at what seemed to me to be a rather luxurious boat or even a private yacht. It turned out to be some kind of charter fishing boat, and it had impressive acceleration. During a trip to the Bahamas, Holly spent most of her time sunbathing on the deck in a tiny bikini. I spent time on the bridge where the captain was supposedly showing me how to operate the boat while in reality, we were gawking at Holly's slender body. Dad, Holly said, hugging the old man who met us on the embankment. This is Mike. It was his wife with whom Morgan played. Holly said, introducing us. Hello, son, he said, shaking my hand, and then Holly's. I told you you could never trust that little shit. But no, you always thought you knew better. Okay, Mike. Let's take you home and change you into something suitable. I realized that my business suit was not considered appropriate attire for the Bahamas. In the house, a large, rambling structure that bore little resemblance to any houses I had been in before, I met Holly's mother, who greeted me like a long-lost son. I'm ashamed of my reserved English nature. Although when Holly's dad showed me to my room, things got a little formal. Let's just say he made sure I knew where my room was. And that's where he and his wife expected me to sleep. You get the idea. The next four days were really enjoyable. When Holly and I weren't sunbathing or swimming in the pool, I was either fishing from the boat with Holly's dad, or we've been to numerous cocktail parties in the evenings. On two of them, Holly danced with me, but she was a little more chaste than that first night at the Miami Hotel. On the last evening before leaving, Holly and I were finishing our evening walk along the beach in the moonlight. We weren't in each other's arms, but she was holding my hand. We talked about how upset I was that the divorce would cost me the house I had spent so many years remodeling to suit my tastes. Avril always let me do whatever I wanted with the house. She just chose the Kohler scheme and everything, an extension and even a kitchen, and bathrooms were always in my plans, as were my garage and workshop. God, how I will miss this workshop. Mike, I want to apologize. 
Holly said suddenly. Apologize for what, Holly? Well, that first evening in Miami, I got a little ahead of myself. Holly, we were both very nervous about what was going to happen. I think we both drank a little more than we should have and said things we shouldn't have. It served as a cover for our nervousness. That's all we have to worry about. I know, but I wouldn't want you to think that I would flirt with someone like that. Damn, don't be stupid, girl. I understand everything perfectly. I have to apologize. I really didn't control myself as much as I should have. Yes, I noticed, big boy. Anyway, we're not the kind of people who give in to our baser instincts like Morgan and Avril, are we? Most definitely not, Holly. We spent almost five days together and haven't even kissed since that first evening. What do you think? Actually, I'm not sure. You are a very attractive woman, and I enjoyed being your official lipstick. But we have to take into account that in some sense we are both on what might be called a rebound. How many relationships are known that would have continued normally when they began under such circumstances? Yes, I must admit that they usually lead to heartache for everyone in the end, Holly said quietly. Besides, we're still married, Holly, even if our spouses seem to have lost sight of that fact. Yes, you're right. We are above such behavior, aren't we? Unfortunately, I answered. Does this mean you can't smudge my lipstick at least once before you leave? Holly, like I said, I sure as hell would love to apply for a full-time job as your lipstick smearer. Okay, I spent the next half hour or so watching Holly's lipstick smudge. During this time, Holly tried to find out if I still had tonsils, using her tongue as a probe. However, by the time we returned to her parents, we were acting like proper good friends. The next day, the same boat took us back to the mainland at even greater speed than before. Holly then walked me to the airport for my flight back to the UK. Come on, I smeared Holly's lipstick on again before I got on the plane. When I finally returned into the house, Avril was already waiting for me. Surprisingly, there weren't that many fireworks. Hey, sorry, Mike, I ruined everything, didn't I? Said a very depressed Avril when I found her sitting in the kitchen. I just can't understand why, Avril. I thought we were fine here. Yes, Mike, I just got carried away with my work. I'm really sorry that all of this came to my mind. I really didn't mean to cheat on you or anything. God, Mike, I still love you. Yes. So what feelings do you have for him? Damn, please don't ask. He flattered and seduced me. I acted like a stupid little schoolgirl. Are you... You know, with his wife? Avril. That was all I needed to say. Damn. I could have guessed you wouldn't do this. Now you're going to tell me that we don't stand a chance, aren't you? You know me better than I know myself, Avril. When do you want me to move out, or will you leave? Provided you don't bring any of your lovers here, Avril, we can both live here until the house is sold. This will give us both time to find some decent housing. Well, what about divorce? I am ready to change the grounds to irreconcilable differences, provided that we can come to an amicable agreement on finances. This should allow us to get a quick divorce. Take the papers and show me where to sign, Mike. I ruined everything so I won't give you any more trouble, Avril said humbly. That's how it really was. The divorce took place within a few months. It didn't take long for the house to sell. It had been on the market for less than two months when a real estate agent came along and bought it on behalf of his client. The strange guy never seemed like a real estate agent to me. In any case, we didn't even see the buyers and didn't know their names. After long negotiations, he even bought almost all the furniture. I was moving into a furnished rental, and Avril, having been fired by her employer, suddenly discovered that another American company was after her. She left England for California before the divorce was finalized. I don't know. Maybe two months later, I got a call from the agent of the people who bought our house. It appears my client is having some problems with the control of his central heating system, Mr. Crosby. We wanted to ask if you could kindly come and see them this evening and explain how to do it, he asked. I don't understand why they had any problems. It's a pretty standard system. Yes, tell them I'll stop by tonight on my way home from work and see if I can help. By the way, what are their names? I asked. Thank you, Mr. Crosby. I'll tell them to expect you around half past seven. Goodbye, he answered, and the connection was broken. This is weird. I remember thinking... 
How the hell did he know that I would get there at half past seven? It was the time I always came home from work when I lived there, and this scoundrel hung up without telling me his name. The garden looked much the same when I turned into the driveway. That is, if you ignore the little sign proudly telling everyone that the new homeowner used a certain local landscaping company to mow the lawn, etc. There were no cars in the driveway, so I parked in my old spot. With a heavy heart, I walked to the front door and pressed the bell. It's very strange, you know, to return to the house where you lived before and find that you have to ring the doorbell instead of just putting the key in the lock and entering. Who is this? A voice came from behind the closed door. Mike Crosby, I shouted back. I came to explain the heating system. I heard all the locks and bolts that I had installed on this door with my own hands being moved and opened. Most of them were for when we went to bed or left the house empty. I never expected anyone to use them all the time. Eventually the door opened and a girl of about 18 opened the door and invited me in. The hostess is waiting in the living room. The girl said it very precisely, as if she was rehearsing a line. Then she giggled and ran to the kitchen. I knocked and opened the living room door. I'm Mike Crosby. It seems like you're having some problems with your central heating, I said to the woman who stood with her back to me and looked into the garden behind the house. No, the heating is working fine, Mike. What I'm really looking for is someone to smudge my lipstick, she said, turning and walking into my arms. It's funny how things can turn out, but I never got to spend another night alone in my apartment. Holly and I got married in less than two months. I don't work at the hospital anymore. I am now the joint representative of Holly's father, along with Holly, in the UK and Europe. This guy gets into everything you can think of. To be honest, I'm a little out of it most of the time, although I pick up a few things from Holly along the way. Not that there was much to do other than represent. I have a feeling that Holly's father just wants to make sure that I can afford to keep Holly in the way she is used to. Anyway, in a few months, Holly will have to stop chasing me around Europe. Well, you can't drag a child around with you, can you? No, I still won't fly if I can help it. Honestly, life since we got married has been like one long driving vacation. Very nice in the brand new Beamer. What do people call it? Oh yes, I think I fell on my feet and also fell in love with one of the most beautiful women in the world. Most of the nights we go away, we spend in luxury hotels. I realized that the nights were more tiring than driving, as I discovered that Holly was sometimes insatiable. God only knows how Morgan found the strength to fight Avril. But Holly insists that I'm much better than Morgan in this regard. Perhaps he never gave Holly, and her needs, as much attention as she deserved. Mind you, sometimes I think my new wife has a really twisted sense of humor. One morning I was coming out of our closet at home and saw Holly saying, Thank you. Photographs she hid in one of her dresser drawers. Then she looked very embarrassed when she realized that I had seen her. Of course, I asked who was in the photo. You won't believe this. This is a portrait of your ex-wife, Avril. Holly answered with a smile. Well, Mike, you have to admit that if Avril hadn't let Morgan talk her into bed with him, I would never have found you, would I? I'll always have a soft spot for her, you know. Yes, this is a different way of looking at things. I went to the chest of drawers and took a photo. Thank you, Avril. I never would have thought that the way you run around me and cheat on me would ultimately lead me to such happiness. I said. Then I put the photo back in the drawer and turned my attention back to the woman who really mattered to me. It must have been almost lunchtime when we went out again for some fresh air and went downstairs for breakfast. Lord, am I really that tired? Life goes on. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.